So, um, what did you like? Uh, what, yeah, what, what sort of comments do you have about the, the article? Where is it? This one. Would you like to play this game? Who would like to learn a language with some sort of a puzzle game solving some mysterious crime in Jovik, for example? Or learning a little bit more about history of Jovik and learning Norwegian this way? I mean, yeah, for you, like learning Spanish in some Spanish neighborhood. Uh huh. You translate it directly. Yeah. Because back in the day, they, uh, they would hide there and then stab someone and take their money for it. valuable. So, learning some language in something like that might be interesting. Yeah. People are fascinated by stuff like that uh, with uh, Jack the Ripper, for instance. Yeah. Stuff like that. Grotesque murders. Yeah. I think so. I, I think I would kind of like to to do that and have the contextual surroundings around some phrases and some language um, um, things. So, uh, for example, I know trek is push and I remember that because every time I go to a swimming pool there is uh, on the door, you, you see it, and I have this mental image of that door with that uh, letters. If I learn it by teacher telling me track means push, uh, pull. Uh, pull. Yeah, I I wouldn't um, I wouldn't kind of remember that, but because of that I, you know, you do you make the associations. So yeah, it's, track is pull. The S something is push. Yeah, shiv that one. Yeah. So S something is still kind of yeah. <laughs> Uh, so that I I think that would help, uh, but they haven't kind of run. They they have a good discussion and they have some good references about those being important in learning, but they haven't actually done sort of study themselves on on the on the app, um, and I thought that that would be that would be helpful. Um, but it 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 was it, it is kind of an, an interesting article and as i'm saying the first part is excellent it, it's a really in-depth analysis of how the contextual learning kind of uh, uh happens and how it is important and what the kind of uh, pedagogical um you know uh, elements are so i i really like that that discussion um How generalizable it is, what do you think? I mean, they were quite uh, lucky because they do have uh, a particular Spanish heritage in the uh, place where they were doing the app development, but, you know, how applicable that would be, for example, to Norwegians in Jovik learning Spanish? <laughs> no. <laughs> You may imagine some sort of a Spanish ship. Or, or, you can learn German now because of the war. Yeah. There are a lot of interesting places here. Yeah. So if you do another language like German, <laughs> it's something more applicable. Could be, yeah. Yeah, so we discussed the knowledge about versus knowledge of um, the, the difference. Do you feel you're learning a lot of things in your curriculum or you're learning more about things? Why do you think it's the case?
So one one main reason is that it's much easier to learn and teach about something, right? We spend two hours and you have pretty decent understanding on some of the techniques and some of the problems and challenges of augmented reality, right? So you may discuss, like if you meet someone, you may discuss augmented reality with them, uh, having read a couple of papers and having a short discussion about it. If you were to do something with augmented reality, how long that would take you to get into a, say, intermediate level or beginner's level? How long it would take you to install some of the libraries and do some basic marker tracking and generate some 3D content and have an app doing something with augmented reality? A week? Maybe a bit more? Yeah, never done it before. Maybe two weeks. So it's much longer than two hours lecture. Right, so that that is, and it would be much harder to to do that. The other reason is assessing it would be harder too. So I can ask you a question in the form of an exam, a little bit about augmented reality, and I can see if you remember the three ways, or if you know what mixed reality is compared to augmented and virtual reality, and and things like that. Right, it's kind of easy. It's factual. If I were to test your skills of how, you, how much you've learned of actually doing things within augmented reality space, well, I would have to give you a project, probably, probably, right? Or take home exam for the weekend and say, yeah, do this, and then you do that, and then I assess you. It will be much harder, right? Um, so there are some kind of non-important reasons why we educational system is structured a little bit more around teaching about instead of teaching off. Um, it's the same with language acquisition. It's much easier for the teacher to tell me what an, at, and different tenses and verbs are instead of actually teaching me the language. I mean, I kind of have to teach the language myself. It's The teacher can't do that really, right? The teacher can create an environment in which I will practice and will sort of learn, but you know, that's, it's much easier for the teacher to teach me about a language because that's structured, that's sort of facts and, you know, certain things. Um, but we kind of changing that. So we have the GPU course, for example, and we try to get uh, a way, you know, not teach you about GPU programming, but create an environment where you do learn GPU programming sort of yourself. Uh, and we help you overcome some of the obstacles. Um, so the, 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 the MOOCs and some of the online resources and so on, they kind of helping to change and, and modify some of the educational uh, systems. Yeah, so some... So they do have kind of a, a proper scientific uh, framework for their methodology, um, but it has some some challenges and it has um, some difficulties in sort of doing it well. And doing those interventions in situ, um, that's Latin for in place, uh, means it's kind of challenging because you're not planning things uh, ahead, you're actually measuring things and developing things as you as you go. So you don't have a, a clearly repeatable pattern which you can kind of verify. You have something which you have to deal kind of more spontaneously with. Um. Uh, what what other um, augmented reality? apps related to language you know about. Do you know the one where you point at the sign and it translates it on the fly? So, yeah, yeah. So they, they have a kind of a translator where it translates things on the fly and uses 
augmentation of text to provide you the um, the translated text. It's reasonably fa simple because you just want to recognize where you have the text in the view and then replace that text with the translated text. So it's sort of a, one of the easier augmented reality tasks um, in a sense. Yeah, so although that discussion was um, interesting, the, um, also when, when they were discussing the game itself, I, I imagined that it's sort of like the text-based uh, dungeon game where you're kind of asking questions <coughs> and you have some, uh, some possibilities of answers and, and so on. So it's sort of a narrative which kind of uh, splits. But I don't know exactly how it actually works. It would be helpful is to have some, um, some screenshots and some sort of... Uh, demonstration of how it actually works, right? Because I have to imagine a lot of how the game works from the description they've provided. It was, I, I felt it wasn't 100% covering exactly how, how things work. What do you think? How did you imagine the game to be? You, did you imagine like menus and clicking on text or typing text or it was not specified, right? More like you send them options. Yeah. And, and then the option will take you in one path and the other. Yeah, exactly. But you don't know exactly, right? So that was my guess. But um, so I, I sort of, yeah, I, I appreciated that as well. And I sort of like the idea of mixing some of the real places with virtual places and virtual things. So like the cafe was um, fictional, but it was sort of in a place which used to be a cafe. Um, so that, yeah. Um, I also thought it would be cool if they combined some of the, so so this um, place where they used to stab people. What What's that? It's a pub or what, what's inside? Okay. Corner or a, a turn in yeah. Yeah. It used to be a, just a corner in the Right. Because if you have you know, if you have um a place like a cafe which has some historical background, you could make part of the game involving the actual cafe and the barman or whoever works there, because they might be willing to, you know, engage. Yeah, we can say that with the swimming hall there. Yeah. There are dark. Mm -hmm. Valley. All right. They used to rob people there, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Right. So, uh, so that was also one of the statements. Um, so, narrative is a key element in creation of any successful game. It, it's not super related to this course, more to the serious games course, but do you agree with that? Do you feel narrative is important in of any successful game? Do you know of... You don't need it in Angry Birds, for instance, you can still shoot at the green thing. Yep. Narrative. Yeah. Exactly. There, there are successful games with zero or almost zero narrative. Uh, the The... You know, you you have Tetris, which is also o o almost always uh, brought up as a game with no narrative whatsoever, purely mechanic-based game, but extremely successful. Um, Minesweep, Minesweeper, uh, lots of hours spent playing it. Well, no narrative whatsoever. Um, yeah. 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 Exactly. So. It, you don't need narrative. Uh, what they probably meant is in the educational context, you probably do need narrative for the game to kind of make the educational aspect and the game aspect kind of glued together some, somewhat. Uh, 
but yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, and I didn't play with Ares, uh, so that was also quite interesting to read about um, a system which kind of helps you build um, augmented reality interact interactive storytelling. So we've used another system which was used for treasure hunt sort of uh, type of applications. So you were geo marking some of the spots and then having some kind of a uh, treasure hunting challenges for people, for participants to visit some locations and collect some, some of the things. It's kind of, um, yeah, similar to the yeah, geo, various geo sort of uh, based games and, and activities. Um, but yeah, we, we may want to check that one. All right, so that sort of covers um, the first part of the um, of the class on augmented reality. And if you do have time, please pop in to to the office and check the the meta glasses. Um, I may see. I may bring them tomorrow to the class actually. Um, and tomorrow we will discuss more on te technology and more on kind of a recent developments in augmented reality and, and tracking. So you can use more than one article and if, if you find it sort of relevant, um, cover that. Uh, in terms of reading material for tomorrow, I mark those three papers with small x, but do you feel that's okay or do you want people to read uh, different ones? That one is from the big uh, proceedings from this uh, Spanish uh, workshop. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, don't, I just don't remember the name. I just remember they had uh, some images where they uh, had uh, virtual interaction with uh, these boxes. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So it could be. I, I think that's that one. Yeah. The one in the ACM library. Do you have to pay to see it? Because I, I only got the option to pay to download it, even on this. Really? Uh, no, so I can download it and I can put it on, uh, I can link it up from the local, um, so normally you don't have to pay, um, because I, yeah, that option, option wasn't there for me. yeah, it just works, um, not sure why, uh, are you on Edgerom or? Yeah, I sat here, earlier today, so lecture. That's, that's weird, <laughs> yeah, it should work, um. Okay, so I will download it and, and link it up. Uh, so let's stick to those three, uh, which I already marked with the small X uh, for tomorrow. All right, thank you very much.